Today we are very pleased to have Professor Fan Gang with us. He's going to share with us his views on the world economy as well as the Chinese economy. Professor Fan is not only one of the most prominent economists in China, he is also the director of the National Research Economic uh, Institute of China Reform Foundation. Welcome and thank you very much for joining us. Um, we know that the G20 summit has just ended last week and the European crisis is on everyone's mind. So um, uh, the, the G20 nations are working very hard to find a solution to the European debt crisis. And at the same time, the leaders are also looking to emerging economies such as China for help. Uh, so wh what do you think, uh, what role do you think that China should or could play in this, in this um, process of finding a solution? And do you think that China uh, there, do you think there is any preconditions before China extend the, the helping hand? And if China help, do you think this will really um, actually help uh, resolve the European debt crisis? Well, first of all, <laughs> I think G20 spent too much time on the <laughs> European crisis. G20 should be the global issue, mm -hmm. should be focused on the global long-term issue, like uh, reforming the financial system, monetary system. But anyway, the crisis was there, and the people uh, in people's mind, and uh, they have to talk something about that. Uh, then to your main question, uh, I don't think anybody mm -hmm. can really help Europe to fix their problems, mm -hmm. particularly long-term problem. Mm -hmm. Your productivity, competitiveness, your welfare system, your spending, your fiscal discipline of the Eurozone, mm -hmm. All those things are European issues. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, Europeans have to work hard to fix out. The, the Greeks have to work hard <laughs> to, to work out their, their problem. Nobody, nobody, you know, outside can help, really help. Uh, but then, of course, in the short run, mm -hmm. when you deal with this, uh, uh, you know, financial debt crisis, mm -hmm. but in particular, uh, some of outside money say, injection of some mm -hmm. uh, outside uh, cash may help to ease the pain at the moment, mm -hmm. right? To uh, win some time mm -hmm. uh, to allow people to fix the problem. Uh, from that point of view, of course, everybody may mm -hmm. helpful, may be helpful. Uh, but then the question is, what the mechanism? You know, it's it's not a money issue. You know, a lot of people have the money, but how the money can be used? Uh, I don't think people should uh, uh, argue for the uh, conditions or something. But on the other hand, uh, people should not set the preconditions. Mm -hmm. For example, I noticed that recently uh, some European leaders mm -hmm. said, uh, of course. I believe he's uh, in responding to uh, some journalist uh, as a question. Would you make some exchange or uh, do some uh, compromise on uh, other issues uh, with China so to, to get China uh, uh, investment? Mm -hmm. And he said no concessions. Well, this is a become a, no concessions become a condition. So why is that? Uh, the other issue could be the other issue. Yeah, should not be attached to this issue, but uh, uh, you clearly make this as a precondition that make other people think this is a precondition. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, I think uh, uh, some other people set the precondition for inviting China to, to, be, to be a help. Mm -hmm. So that I don't, don't think is a very good situation mm -hmm. for China to do because that put China in a very awkward position. <laughs> if we do, uh, that means we take the precondition. So, uh, so that's, a w that's one issue. The second issue is, of course, the uh, mechanism uh, of the arrangement. Mm -hmm. I think IMF should play a role mm -hmm. in this because uh, uh, it's an international organization. Uh, it, there is a, already a, a mechanism on, on this kind of uh, 
uh, crisis management, the the rescue package, all those things. Uh, so uh, that's what I would like to uh, to see uh, what is going to be the development uh, on this regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, if IMF had play more roles and set up some international uh, uh, mechanism, uh, and then to see what the individual countries uh, would like to contribute or r- would like to be involved. Uh, so that's a, uh, the issue for the next uh, stage. Mm-hmm. So I don't uh, have any other comments on the, at, at this stage mm-hmm. uh, because a lot of things already happened, and we have to wait to see what the next to happen. So you think the IMF is a, is a reasonable way for China to, to, to help the Europe solve the crisis? Yeah, well, the uh, people are talking about uh, enlarging uh, European funds, yeah. fund resources, mm-hmm. uh, but some other countries already rejected. <laughs> uh, so does that mean uh, if you want to play the role and uh, everybody should be on the board? Uh, so we will see, we will see. But uh, naturally, MF uh, is a mechanism mm-hmm. on this international financing mm-hmm. or international crisis management. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I want to also ask you about the RMB issue, cause which is also on the, on the agenda of the G20 summit. Uh, in October, the U.S. Senate passed a bill that is targeting the RMB value and the, the U.S. lawmakers voted to, to le- levy tariffs on some of Chinese imports for the alleged undervalued uh, Chinese currency. So um, wh- what do you think the, is the, the U.S. thinking behind such bill? And do you think the bill will actually um, help uh, solve the global imbalances in the trade and help revive the U.S. economy? Well, this issue has been there for, for a long time. Right. Yeah, it's not the, not the new <laughs> movement, but uh, uh, it's a theoretical in a, in some sense, you know, uh, uh, political, uh, you know, with the political cycles uh, with the U.S. politics. Uh, but the I, I I'm not going to say this is a U.S. motivation, but I would say some of the uh, politicians mm-hmm. uh, really have the motivation. Uh, whatever, <laughs> there are different kind of the, the motivations. Uh, the, of course, now I think the one factor behind is that the U.S. economy is in trouble. Mm-hmm. Unemployment is really uh, a problem. Mm-hmm. It's a stay very high, and uh, it seems uh, quite a uh, stubborn, uh, you know, hard to reduce. Mm-hmm. Then the, these politicians and the other people may look for reasons or for excuse. Mm-hmm. Particularly when, you know, elections coming, they uh, naturally they would like to find some someone to blame. And China is a ready target. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, always like this. Uh, China bashing, you know, it's coming up. Uh, but but uh, uh, I'm not saying everybody uh, would like to see this to happen, you know, mm-hmm. to become a bill, become a law, and then really uh, take actions mm-hmm. uh, against Chinese import, mm-hmm. and then got into kind of the trade war. Mm-hmm. So nobody, not, not everybody would like mm-hmm. to see. And some people uh, in the Congress, not only the, not in the, Senate, some, uh, the Senate, but also in the, in the, in the Congress, mm-hmm. and in the administration understand this is a very dangerous uh, move. And it will not solve the problem. Uh, I, I, I may come to this uh, why it cannot solve the problem later, but but definitely not everybody uh, to know this, uh, and uh, I, I think that this shows that the uh, uh, it's a very complicated issue. Mm-hmm. You know, in the U.S., you may say renminbi is undervalued, mm-hmm. or you may say too much Chinese import, but so many people benefit from this import. Not only the consumers, but think about the companies. Think about the company not only operate in the U.S., but operate globally. You know, how much you know, profit they make from those uh, production in China and the import from China. Mm-hmm. 
And then the price is low, the cost is low, and the, so many people, particularly those people, now un, unemployed mm -hmm. and with low income, they enjoy this import very much. So that's, I, I believe uh, we, we should not take this as one, you know, one country, one interest. It's a very complicated interest. From that point of view, I would say it may not pass uh, through the Congress. And even Congress passed, the, the administration may veto it. You know, Obama may veto it. And uh, I, I think uh, because, because they also, you know, uh, understand uh, some other interests, mm -hmm. not only the one group. And uh, fundamentally, I think uh, uh, people should understand, and some people understand in the U.S., but not, may not be everybody. Uh, this will not solve the problem. Mm -hmm. you know. And the U.S. unemployment has more profound uh, courses Renminbi definitely is a very remote one to blame on. Uh, and uh, without Renminbi's rapid revaluation, uh, if people make effort to, to really address the real issue, like high savings in China and uh, too low savings, too high consumptions in the U.S., and we can address the problem. For example, this year China's export, because China now... Make, really make effort, try to reduce the saving, try to improve the structure of the economy. And this year, we will see China's uh, trade surplus will well under 4%. 4% was a target uh, set by last uh, G20, right? And the U.S. is a very much uh, want to, uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to go for this, right? And China can achieve it without rapid uh, uh, revaluation of the of GDP. But if you do, do not do it, do these real reforms, real structural change. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, you, you, you cannot change. For example, U.S., even China's trade surplus is going down, but U.S. trade deficit may not going down mm -hmm. if you not really fix your, your, your real, mm -hmm. you know, more fundamental uh, problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we should uh, focus on. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, but not last but not least, the renminbi have been appreciated very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in last year, for example, from the June of 2010, when China ref returned to this uh, flexible, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so-called managed floating, uh, China actually, in the real term, mm -hmm. renminbi appreciated almost 10% in one year, June to June, 10% against U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. So if you add the uh, inflation, mm -hmm. the difference difference of inflation between China and the U.S. Mm -hmm. So it's a 4% and nominal appreciation 6%. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's a revaluating. Mm -hmm. But China definitely, uh, China is a developing country. Mm -hmm. And China has its own interest. Mm -hmm. The own interest is the development, mm -hmm. employment, particularly employment of those poor people so poor that, you know, even $1, $2 per day, mm -hmm. right? And the number is much bigger than U.S. unemployed. And how to achieve this growth and the further development mm -hmm. without big interruption by big ex external shocks, mm -hmm. which uh, we may... Uh, uh, understand this kind of a big shock, uh, rethinking of what happened in the Japanese-U.S. Uh, dispute mm -hmm. and the Japanese revaluation uh, movement in the uh, 70s and the 80s, right? And China would lo like to avoid those kind of big mm -hmm. external shock and try to keep the uh, growth going. And this growth is benefiting everybody, mm -hmm. particularly benefiting the U.S., and Europe when they are in the financial trouble because this maintain the global trade and maintain the global gro growth. Mm -hmm. And that, that is the benefit for everybody. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, uh, I would say uh, renminbi is revaluating and the exchange rate regime 
is improving and uh, changing, but it takes time and it should take time, and should not should help for it should uh, should be helping China stay on the track of growth mm -hmm. and employment, uh, rather than what somebody suggested, the rapid change, mm -hmm. flunk, big fluctuations, mm -hmm. and the big fan, big external shocks, and that will definitely uh, should not be the interest for everybody in the long run. So your view is that the, the process of remedy reform should be gradual instead of a, a dramatic one? Definitely. That's, the, uh, that's in the best interest of China. Yeah, that's, that's I've been uh, advocating for for a long time. <laughs> uh, I still believe this is the way. And, uh, you know, uh, gradual, particularly, I will remind people, gradual change have the benefit which avoided the big fluctuations. Mm -hmm. You may say, a lot of people say, uh, one touch, one step mm -hmm. to the equilibrium. But who knows the equilibrium? Where is equilibrium? Mm -hmm. And uh, most time, when you do the rapid radical change, mm -hmm. you overshoot, mm -hmm. right? When you have an overshoot, the next day, you may change the direction, and then you may have another big movement, big change, and you may do the other, an, another overshooting in the other direction. Mm -hmm. So that makes the market fluctuations uh, too big, yeah, too volatile, and that will damage the growth, definitely. Mm -hmm. So this is a gradual approach. It, you know, it actually follow the market direction, you know, we know there is uh, some undervalue, and so the things are moving in that direction. But uh, we are uh, searching for the equilibrium in a gradual way. You know? It may take longer time, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, a, it's much more smooth mm -hmm. and much more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, from that point of view, uh, I think that this kind of managed floating is actually the manage the risk mm -hmm. and the manage the shocks. Mm -hmm manage the overshooting. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, it, it's the best solution. Mm -hmm. Not from micro point of view, theoretically, but also from practical way. Mm -hmm. You know, the company need time to adjust themselves. Yeah. Uh, and the t company uh, need time to use to that, uh, you know, the higher level of the cost and the higher level of the, uh, the change of the, the structure of the cost. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, People say if you have this problem, uh, if you do not do the you know one step overshooting, <laughs> uh, you always have this uh, capital sp speculations, uh, the so-called hot money. Uh, people and people know you will appreciate five percent, mm -hmm. so they, they will they will speculate on that. Well, which policies does not have cost? How we can. You know, you either have this cost or have that cost. Mm -hmm. The real issue is compare which one is smaller, mm -hmm. right? Compare which which situation, which policy alternatives are actually better than the others. Mm -hmm. And then you never have a policy without cost. Mm -hmm. So dealing with hot money, dealing with over inflow of the capital mm -hmm. is an issue, is a problem, is risky also some risk involved, some, some cost involved, in, including the domestic o inflation, including the uh, assets bubble. That's something you need to, to worry about too. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's still, a <laughs> uh, 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 cost is still lower right. than the other one. Mm -hmm. And that w the other one could kill your economy, mm -hmm. could kill your, your development. Mm -hmm. That's something uh, I think, uh, <laughs> that's uh, economic thinking, mm -hmm. compare, the problem, mm -hmm. <laughs> you choose the best from the worst, right? right. So that's the only way you can you, you think about it. Mm -hmm. So don't argue with me. Uh, <laughs> this have this the problem with this uh, solution. Of course, of right. course. So talking about the U.S. Senate currency bill, you said it's unlikely to be passed by the House of Representatives. But the the, the Chinese Ministry of Commerce said if it becomes a law, China will retaliate. So what do you think will happen between the U.S. and China? in terms of trade and finance if it really becomes a law? 
yeah, we, we can assume <laughs> that uh, will pass. Then we think about it. But that's something I really <laughs> do not like to think about. <laughs> so uh, we're better to work on the be- better scenario. You know, uh, the worst scenario. That's the worst scenario, of course. If you, pass, if you really, you know, not only the pass the bill, but really take action, you know, uh, against China's import and the discrimination and the, those kind. Of course, China will retaliate, and that means the trade war, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what we want to avoid. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's uh, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, we should work on better scenario. Better mm-hmm. scenario is uh, you know, communicate mm-hmm. and let people understand uh, what's really going on and uh, what the damage that will cause. And I believe some people, I believe there's still a lot of people mm-hmm. in the Congress, in the administration, and in the lobby groups, mm-hmm. uh, corporate lobby groups, and other uh, NGOs. I, I hope and I believe they, uh, some of them understand the real issue, real situation, understand what the damage this will cost. Mm-hmm. So I hope, uh, I hope that it will not pass. And I believe there's a good chance mm-hmm. uh, this one will not be passed. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the, the small and business enterprises in China because they are really in a difficult time and they have been caught. They have caught a lot of media attention because uh, many private business owners have actually uh, closed or shut down their business and fled the cities, such as Guangzhou. And um, economists said it's a it's a result of the tightening of China's monetary policy. But some some other. Uh, 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 opinion say that you know it's the, the the challenge that is facing the small and small business in China is not just the the money issue. So what do you think are the ch- real challenges that is facing the small business in China, and what needs to be done in order for them to survive and de- to develop in the future? Well, first of all, uh, we need to have a <laughs> right information. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a lot of. Small, medium, <laughs> and close down. Wenzhou is a mm-hmm. Wenzhou is a big city, mm-hmm. but it's only tiny percentage of right. the whole 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 country, right? Yeah. So the vast majority and the other places are still not that kind of a mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. But then think about think about the overheating and then tightening, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Two thousand nine, China take a very strong action to try, try to stimulate the economy mm-hmm. against the. Uh, uh, global financial crisis, and it's maybe overdone, and uh, there is some overheating. Mm-hmm. So uh, growth rate went up to almost 11 percent. Yeah. That's overheated. Mm-hmm. So then you need to calm it down. Mm-hmm. So uh, to avoid the big bubble, mm-hmm. including the uh, uh, the housing market, mm-hmm. you do not want it to explode. Mm-hmm. You want to control it. At the early stage, and stop the spreading, stop the spreading of this bubble to other places. So this it could it it, it is, has been very successful, mm-hmm. and uh, we avoid the big bubble, big overheating, and even the housing market. There is no big bubble mm-hmm. in the globe uh, in the national uh, market. Mm-hmm. Maybe some spots, maybe some big cities, but it didn't spread over to the to the, the vast majority of other places. But then you think, you know, uh, uh, that that what I mean. I would say the Chinese economy is now soft landing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's already under management. It's already uh, smoothed out, and uh, uh, overheating has been avoided. Mm-hmm. But then even soft landing. Think about this: uh, your growth rate should come down from eleven percent mm-hmm. to nine percent, mm-hmm. right? And there's a two two percentage differences. A two per percentage of growth of GDP means hundred billion uh, RMB value added, mm-hmm. and there must be some company to suffer, mm-hmm. right? And you want to tighten the <coughs> the money supply. You want to reduce the liquidity. Mm-hmm. There must be somebody feel the difference, right? Before you just go to the bank and bank it, give you whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And you are flooded with this liquidity, no longer the case. Mm-hmm. And the people, of course, f- will fail. And the pe- money is already spent, money already lent out, and now you want to take it back. Mm-hmm. 
you know, with the tightening policy just locked up some money. Of course, people will fight tight. And who will feel that most? Small, medium. And that's an ever, everywhere in the world. When you have a tightening, when you have a crisis, mm-hmm. we, we're still not the crisis. If you have a crisis, who will be hit first? The small, medium. Mm-hmm. And who will be failed the tightening? Small, medium. Mm-hmm. Well, from that point of view, you, you have to have somebody to fail, mm-hmm. right? If nobody fail, mm-hmm. that's no adjustment, no nothing change. So from that point of view, I, I would say this is a, a process, a part of the process of adjustment. Mm-hmm. So we have, we have to understand this, the number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, uh, Chinese system particularly have the problem uh, about the small, medium sized enterprise mm-hmm. because uh, the banking, particularly the banking sector, work more for the big ones. Mm-hmm. Really, not really work very good. And recently, we have some small local financial institutions and which uh, more lend more, but still not enough. So that's what we have to address. So I agree that we need some uh, the macro policy. M- macro policy may still stay the same because we still have inflation, but uh, we have some macro. Uh, policies to address this issue, mm-hmm. to allocate uh, special funds mm-hmm. to help the small, medium-sized enterprises in some local places. I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a uh, uh, the issue we have to address. Mm-hmm. Then uh, I have to say, uh, this time the problem not only the policy. Mm-hmm. We need to think about company themselves. And think about uh, the financial bubble uh, or financial uh, illusion Mm -hmm. which we had in past years uh, may have very bad impact on some companies, Mm -hmm. on some uh, business people. What happened in Wenzhou, for example? A lot of people move the money out of the company mm-hmm. to speculate mm-hmm. in housing market, mm-hmm. in financial market, in the security market, mm-hmm. right? right? Speculate on everything. Last year, the garlic, mm-hmm. the, 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 the bees, you know, all those things. There's a window money up behind, mm-hmm. right? And, and of course, when the tightening up come up, mm-hmm. when the global market suffer, and you need more money, but your money is already located out, mm-hmm. right? You, you, you are focused more on speculation rather than on your business, mm-hmm. on your core business, particularly those industry mm-hmm. uh, business. So we need to think about this. Mm-hmm. Now I think people should understand uh, the financial speculation may have some high return in mm-hmm. short run, but it's more risky in the long run. Mm-hmm. There's no such a business which always generate higher income, higher revenue, mm-hmm. higher profit with low risk, with no risk, never. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, maybe reflect one of the problem of a Chinese economy. Uh, we have uh, high growth in 30 years without big crisis financially or economically. So that make people feel Whatever I speculate, whatever I bet on, I will make money. And the crisis is somebody else's business. It's not, it will not, never happen to me. Now we should under, understand this risky business, speculation, finan- particularly financial. It may come very quick. It may go very quick. So I think this is a good lesson for some people. You know, uh, otherwise, never understand this. And uh, for the other country in the West, they have experienced this for a long time, 100, 200, 300 years ago. They, they experienced this uh, upside down, the mm-hmm. business cycle. But we, we are successfully, we have been successfully avoided a lot of the cycles, you know, because of management, macro policies. Mm-hmm. But that, uh, uh, from the other point of view, people underestimate the risk. Of the, if we want to, have, want to have a market economy, mm-hmm. this is a market economy. You have to take risk by your own, mm-hmm. right? You cannot, at this time, when you speculate, you make a lot of money, and you, 
you kick up the, the bubble, you don't ask the government. Now you come back to ask the government to help you to fix the, your, your problem. Mm -hmm. And that's why what the Occupy Wall Street people right. <laughs> talking about, you guys make so much money in the, in the bubble time, now you crash the government to help you and the taxpayer pay your, your bill and, the, and the, we burn, we burn the, all the burdens and the, why, what, 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 what your responsibility? You know, why don't you contribute more to the national budget, you know? So this time, I think we got this problem. You know, uh, we need to build up the uh, risk control system. Mm -hmm. And we should build up this kind of the risk uh, uh, concept mm -hmm. of the risk, of the market the risk into the business people, into the business agenda, mm -hmm. you know, of, of those business people. So, uh, uh, so that's why uh, I would say it may not be a bad thing, mm -hmm. you know, to experience some not national crisis, but some local isolated uh, uh, problems, and let people understand the risk. Uh, of course, uh, you don't want it to spread over. You don't want this. Uh, uh, you, the government still need to some help, you know. Even in the Wall Street, the government still help <laughs> uh, to avoid the externality mm -hmm. of this financial uh, crisis. Uh, but I don't think it's a big, big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, in the long run, of course, we need to think how uh, to have the mechanism mm -hmm. which in which the small medium sized enterprise can grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to avoid the you know state sector, state company monopoly. Mm -hmm. uh, how to lower the barriers for their entry to the uh, all the industries. Mm -hmm. How uh, to help uh, the small medium side the financing. Mm -hmm. the financing is not only from the banks, but how to develop the funds, mm -hmm. develop the bond market, mm -hmm. uh, develop the PE. Mm -hmm. You know all those kind of things, and the people can raise money. Mm -hmm. Uh, in different ways, and how government and legal f system can help them to secure their property rights and to uh, make them have a long term vision uh, to understand that uh, industries, those real sectors, real business, uh, they may make money, uh, make small money, mm -hmm. uh, smaller money, it's still big money smaller money than what they make in the short run in the financial market, but uh, in the long run, it's less risk. Right. Less ris uh, you know, the, the risk and the, there is always some risk associated with income. Right. You know, if income is high, the risk will be high. Your income is lower, the smaller, but the risk is smaller. Mm -hmm. So you can sustain and you can develop your competitiveness, you can stay in the market and you have sustain sustainable growth. So that's, uh, we need also uh, to change the, uh, the policy framework, institutional framework, also uh, uh, understanding mm -hmm. of the market structure and the market risk. Okay, yes. I think that's a wrap for today's interview. And yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.